Seth, thank you for joining me today. We have a kind of kind of a new format for these uh, quick look videos that we do over here at All In. Matt, thank you for having me. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're doing something a little bit weird here today. We're gonna try this out and see how it works. Um, Crypt Custodian, which we have actually had for quite some time. We got it like way early. Mm -hmm. uh, big thanks to the publisher who provided us the code for this on Nintendo Switch. You've already like played through it. Is that, we're looking at the, the main menu screen right here. It's paused. Uh -huh. um, was it 35 hours? No, it, took it you was, to play this? it was okay. absolutely not 35 hours. My hunch is that it's one of those Switch games. I've encountered this before where in rest mode, it still is counting okay. the time or to some degree. This was more like 10 to 14 ish hours. I think Okay. <laughs> Absolutely nowhere near 35 hours. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> so Matt has um, has curated some some gameplay to show this game off to y'all running on the Nintendo Switch. And um, we're going to just like kind of watch it and Matt will kind of walk us through what's uh, what's happening rather than um, rather than like playing it live. It'll make it kind of easier to, to talk about, especially mm -hmm. since it sounds like there's quite a lot to talk about with this. I've only played it for a few hours, but um, I'm enjoying it so far. You've played through the full thing in, you know, not quite 35 hours. Yeah, something <laughs> like half of that. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, and also just as a heads up, uh, I did a... This beginning of this recording is the start of the game. I figured we should show a little bit of the start, give you some of like the, the NPC dialogue flavor and that kind of stuff, as well as just see how it starts. And then Seth has edited it, so it will fade into a... I'd say a, a mid game portion, early to mid game, okay. like dungeon. Uh, just felt like that would give you a better idea of like the gameplay that we're gonna see. Okay. Well, if you're ready, let's unpause the video. Let's do and it. Check out Crypt Custodian. All right, let's do it. Have okay, you so played? Matt... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was I was just saying. So Matt's starting a new game here. So this is the beginning. Yeah. Have you played any of this developer's other games? I believe it's uh, Kyle Thompson. I don't think so. What not he, um, didn't he do like the, uh, oh, what's it called? Why am I blinking on the name? I, I've heard you talk about it before. Yeah, he did, uh, I think Sheepo and Eyelets are That's the, it, Eyelets is what I was thinking yeah. of, yeah. I think those are like the, I don't know if he's done like smaller stuff, but I think it's those two games and this one that are like his bigger commercial releases. Um, yeah, I've not played Sheepo. I think I saw it ran at a GDQ. Uh, I did play Islets two years ago, and I quite liked it. Um, okay. So first of all, I just want to real quick read off uh, his developer profile on Steam. <laughs> um, it just says, Hey, I'm Kyle, and I make Metroidvanias. My brother Eric makes the music for them. Hope you enjoy. And that's it. <laughs> um that's really because good. yeah, that's that's what he's doing. Every two years, it seems like he's just putting out like a Metroidvania. Um, again, I haven't played Cheapo, but uh, I think it is also a side-scrolling Metroidvania, much like Islets. Um, as you'll see here with Crypt Custodian, it, this is more of a hyper light drifter Metroidvania. Right. Yeah, that was instantly what I thought of when I started playing was Hyper Light Drifter. Also, mm -hmm. I haven't played Sheepo or Islets, but aren't both of those games like combatless Metroidvanias? Isn't that the deal with them? Islets has combat. Okay. Um, I don't know about Sheepo. I th I think that's the case, but I'm not a hundred percent sure about it. Okay, I was I, I for some reason I thought Islets was the same way, but. This game definitely has combat, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, and quite a lot of it. And yeah, like a Hyperlight Drifter esque thing. Like there are boss fights and like a lot of like movement based things, as you're already kind of seeing with with Matt here, like navigating the map even at the beginning of the game. Like just kind of you know top down two um, D kind of perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, very very Hyperlight Drifter, which is for me is great. Uh, Hyperlight Drifter is one of my favorite indie games of the last like decade. God, that game almost is a decade old now that I think about That's it. That's wild. Um, also, I, I liked Death's Door. I don't think I liked it as much as a lot of other people did. But yeah, if you yeah, played, I liked it. Yeah. if you played either of those two games, this is kind of like a smaller scale indie one. Well, I guess those are both indies too, but a smaller scale indie one of those. Um, so basically, if you've been watching the video, your character Pluto 
died, uh, I believe got hit by a truck after he escaped his owner's house. Uh, so now he's in the afterlife and he's trying to get to the palace to figure out where he's going to be sent in the afterlife. And to do that, you need a broom and you just start whacking things, which has consequences shortly. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny the way that that plays out. I like any game where you're like some sort of janitor. Like I like uh -huh. any any <laughs> game where you have like yeah like a broom or like an anodyne. You have like a vacuum or I guess it is a broom in the first anodyne. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it, you know dust force. Like I, I love anything like this. <laughs> there's something I don't know. There's something interesting about like. Maybe because janitors are like, they don't get like a whole lot of thought or like respect in the world. So like putting yeah. you in the shoes of one is, is interesting. Um, I will say all three of these Kyle Thompson games, they have very similar like styles, not just in the visuals, but, but definitely there too. But like the writing is like that it has a very specific level of twee to them. Um, mm -hmm. Like not quite on the level of like chicory or something, but it they definitely have like the characters have, have very distinct personalities. There's always like a level of humor and goofiness to them. Um, though also there's a lot of sweetness, especially in this game. I actually got kind of choked up at the end. I was kind of surprised about it. Aw, yeah. So this is this is Kendra here. Who, if I remember right, this is the character who kind of determines if you go to like the palace or like the like the heaven or hell sort mm -hmm. of allegory <laughs> or the the good place or the bad place i suppose right um, yeah yeah kendra is basically the main villain of the game and she shows up from time to time with just little things uh, going on yeah all all the characters you meet have that like, you see their history you see like a little bit of like their life and what they were up to and then you see how they died kind of um some of them again genuinely like sad and bittersweet and nostalgic and emotional it's it it genuinely got to me by the end and then also i like kendra's big eyes right there when she opens them mm -hmm. it just looks very silly there's some good frogs uh-huh good frogs <laughs> that, that picture is very good you know? <laughs> really good picture <laughs> It's very basically Kendra's just like, oh, you were such a good cat, and you're like, it's so obvious that you need to go to the palace. And then like, wait a minute, you just smashed all of my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I also this game, and I, I think Eyelets also did this, has fun with like the text of like random, not random, but specific words will be shaking like guilt. In oh, that love last it. Dialogue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love when games do stuff like that. Such a mess. Yeah, always, you know. Is Zelda, like, the first instance of that? Like, where they, like, emphasize certain words? Usually in Zelda, it's by coloring them. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. But, yeah, like... I, yeah. yeah. Always I, effective. I, I, I like it. I genuinely don't know what the first game to do that was. But, yeah, anytime there's any, any kind of font work play... I think my wife and I talked about it in the Magical Delicacy video. But, yeah, I don't, That's right. really, yeah. really enjoy that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, that was, like, the tutorial area, and now you're out in the the kind of open world i would i will say also i think this game is pretty open i only played through the whole the whole thing once but i think i could have done things in a very different order um mm. so su surprisingly open i would say that's cool yeah so so this is like you're kind of navigating the world you you have these like um piles of like trash in mm -hmm. the world like that that black like sludge that you uh that you saw matt sweep up there and um, you've got these, these are like your save points where you can also fast travel and stuff. And yeah, this is, this is kind of what like the, the moment to moment is. I want to comment real quick too. You said his brother is the one doing the music. The mm -hmm. music's good. The music is fantastic. It's really, yeah. really good. Uh, Eyelids also brother by his, or music by his brother, Eric. Fantastic. Um, I genuinely, I know you and I are both like the video game music dorks. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I would recommend playing both of these games just for the soundtracks. They're very, very, like, ethereal and just beautiful. Love it. Yeah. Hey, got your roll there. Got your little mm -hmm. dodge roll. And even though, I, you know, I'm more specifically comparing this to stuff like Hyper Light Drifter, but um, it is more Metroidvania-esque than I feel like Hyper Light Drifter was, which I feel like... Sure. The upgrades there were more about like different guns and stuff. You're not, you're, you are getting like, you can make builds here. Um, 
but it's more about like Metroidvania-esque traversal items and being able to get to new areas. Um, you'll see it once we transition over to the the next section of the video, but uh, you get like an upgraded dash that lets you go dash in midair and it uh, cools down faster. Right. Um, in fact, because I played this literally like 20 minutes after I beat the game and recorded this video, uh, I kept trying to dash in midair. You might be even be able to tell <laughs> at some of my weird dashes that I was trying to do a midair dash because I was so used to it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, and, and you saw, like, Matt was doing kind of like a little, like, locked combat room sort of thing. Um, that, that's pretty common. Like, every now and then you'll just bump into these, like, you know, kind of rooms where you have to defeat, you know, waves of enemies or whatever in mm -hmm. order to progress. Um, there are a few things like that in addition to, like, puzzle solving and dungeons and all the rest. The puzzle solving is like, and again, you'll see a lot more of that when we skip ahead, but um, it's genuinely good. It, it's never too, like, obtuse or anything. It, it, all of his games, from what I can tell, or at least the two that I've played, just they have very, very good forward momentum feeling. Like, you never feel stuck for super long. Um, the, the world map in this game is huge. Like, it, it's massive, but because they let you warp anywhere at any time or not anywhere but to any save point at any time right uh couple that with the fact that you could just pay money to have them mark on your map where you should be going you 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 never have to be stuck it's all completely on you i never used the feature to to mark my map um i, ju I just wanted to explore and find stuff on my own yeah, i love the art too i i love the way the game looks i think it has a really good like kind of like yeah it's it's 2d but there's still like texture to the world it's very moody mm -hmm, all the mm -hmm. all the rain right now about to there's go a lot this of bar. yeah there's a lot of unique assets like that like that neon sign um like mm -hmm. a surprising amount considering like you know the scope and scale of the game like yeah you never see like this jukebox reuse or anything like that it, it's there's a lot of love put into these and um yeah, ever since I played Islets two years ago, that was one of my favorite games that year, and I, I feel like I, I saw no one really talking about it. So when we got this code in, I really wanted to go out of my way to give it some kind of a, any kind of attention I can because I think it yeah. it's really good. Uh, yeah. So and as you can see here, this is your main shop in the game. You can buy mm -hmm. new upgrades and stuff. Um, this is the tutorialization for that. You'll see in a second when I go to equip it. But yeah, you build up your, your jar meter, which is that big blue pot next to your life. And then you can you can press B to do use your special. Um, and like I said, I put like definitely over, I think around 12 hours into this. And I didn't find all of the super moves and upgrades and stuff. So there's definitely a lot to find. Yep. Yep. So that's what you're spending that sludge that you're sweeping up on. Mm -hmm, getting new mm -hmm. upgrades and stuff for your build. I think also, um, I think there's enough upgrade points to where you can equip everything, uh, but I didn't get all of them. You can also buy them in, in, once you get access to that VIP room that you just saw. Okay. <laughs> Re-elect like Kendra. Yep, again, good, good... Uh, good example of the humor, but also like the unique assets just like sitting around in the game. It's, it's very good, very, very lovingly made all around. Um, we are getting relatively close to the end of this beginning section. And so, like I said, I just wanted y'all to see the beginning of the game and the general flow before we get to some of the more like puzzle oriented stuff. Now, one thing that I will say, and, and you can speak on this more um, since you got further in than I did, but um, just in the, the early bit that I played, it seemed like a lot of the combat was just sort of like your your basic attack plus like occasional special attack. Like it didn't seem like there was like, at least from the, again, the beginning of the game that I've played, I'm, I've just played like, you know, four or five hours or something, but mm -hmm. it, um, it, it seemed like there wasn't all that much like... Uh, like combos and stuff like this right yeah um so i guess i forgot to mention 
the thing I bought or one of the things I bought in that shop is that little twirling thing around me. Yeah. Um, so those just like do damage when they touch enemies and they regenerate after a while. So like that's where the combat variety more so comes in is like what what which passives you have equipped and then yeah what special you want. Right. But yeah, as far as I'm aware, again, I didn't 100% the game, but yeah, there's no major change to the flow beyond, like, yeah, you build up your special meter with normal attacks, and you let loose your special move whenever you want yep. kind of thing. Um, yeah, which is are, fine. But. Yeah, yeah, it's totally fine. Um, you will see a boss in this video. I think it's actually maybe my favorite boss in the game. Um, there are like different moves you can do like if you jump and then hit the attack button that you slam down and then you can also right. get you can get passives that like add like stats to that move specifically so like you theoretically can start doing that move more often if, if that's the what suits your build you know um but yeah the, the basic flow of combat is what you're seeing here it's just a lot of building up your meter then unleashing it Ah, and there is an upgrade point, so you got money and upgrade point from doing that challenge. It wasn't clear that was a challenge of you had to beat that without getting hit, and then the chest opens for you. Yeah, I also, I don't know if you find it in this video or not, but th there was like, uh, or maybe that is what, what it just was. Is that like one of those curses or whatever? Where, uh, uh, I think that's later in the video, yeah. Okay, yeah, because I, I found one when, when I was playing too, and it's like... Yeah, it, it was like, I think it, it had me at one health, and I had to kill, like, X amount of enemies without being hit, essentially, mm -hmm. and then the curse would unlock. Yeah, there's actually quite a few variety of those curses. There's one where, like, enemies explode after death, or there, there's at least a few other ones. They're, they're pretty interesting, and yeah, when you beat them, you get an upgrade point. That's cool. More, more things that are reminiscent of skulls in Halo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's, man, I didn't remember that there were so many combat shrines in this beginning part. There's a pretty good amount of enemy variety too. Yeah, there, there is every area of which there are a lot. Like I, I want to say there's at least like ten distinct, unique areas. They all have their own enemy. Now, granted, some of them are you know kind of variations of previous ones, but. Yeah. Still, it, it, it's pretty impressive. They all have unique art assets, and they behave relatively differently. Um, yeah, figuring out, like, the different enemy patterns every time you get to new areas was a big joy for me as someone that really enjoys, like, the combat in games like this, like Hyper Light Drifter. Um, in general, you're probably going to see it more. Uh, there's a jukebox that's just a... You can collect those and put them in the jukebox. Um, in general, you're going to see it more in the second chunk of this video but there's a lot of shmup elements in the combat right uh, yes it's, it's the same thing with eyelets like it, it's interesting that he's combining just like bullet hell stuff with metroidvanias i think it's pretty cool i love pearl and is it pebble the yeah the pebble. One? yeah <laughs> very cute Yep, the characters are all just very cute. Yeah, like you said earlier, a lot of frogs. It's mostly cats and frogs, but there's also some birds and mice in here, too. Pearl and Pebble have a little a little story, too, that's very sweet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's one later on, I think it's just called, like, Whaler, and it's, like, this depressed... I think it was like a wolf that got separated from his pack and he's just waiting for them to also die and join him in the afterlife, but he's sad and lonely the whole time while waiting for him. It's 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 pretty sad. Ah, so this is where we transition over. At the start of this video, I zoomed out right away just to show you an idea of how big the map is. And again, this is actually not that far into the game. I think this is like the third dungeon that I did. Um, so the map is like legitimately like triple the size of what you just saw there briefly jeez but again yeah, never I did not get this far it, it's never a pain to navigate though like because of the fact that you can warp to any save point whenever you want like it it is it's very easy and welcoming game to, to just explore um, yeah. yeah so as you can see the main gimmick in this dungeon or maybe you can't tell but whenever i dash stuff can turn into like a ghostly form that 
I can't affect, but it also doesn't oh, affect okay. me. So this is like, when I first got here, I instantly just kind of paused the game and then plugged in, docked my switch and then plugged in the Elgato. I'm like, okay, I have a feeling this That's area is going sick. to be really cool. And yeah. yeah, it ended up being pretty cool. I'm, I'm genuinely excited to show this part off. This is a very like Mario Galaxy 2 totally. thing, yeah. Yes, totally. First thing I thought of. That's so, so yeah. cool. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was I was just gonna say, like, it's it's interesting that um it's it's interesting that the game like is is doing things like environmentally, I guess, even with like e even though the, the, the combat is is like this, like it's pretty simple control wise. Mm -hmm. It's it's getting a lot of mileage out of its own limitations, which I think is cool. Right. And like Again, every area is very distinct, not just in the enemy, enemy variety, but also the kinds of puzzles you're solving, the kinds of platforming you're doing, just like how, how it all looks. It's all very... there. Again, there's a lot of like art assets made for this game, like probably more than you would think just looking at it. And it also, as you'll notice, um, I got hit pretty early on. I only have one health here, and I, I make it a, a decent chunk in before we die. Um, the game is not, like, super-duper hard. Like, again, there, there are bullet hell elements of it that can make it hard, but it's it's never... It's not meant to be hard. Same thing with his other games. They're, they're just very approachable all around. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, too, because while... There, there are certainly other games that have, like, that, like, shifting... Like, Guacamelee has something like this, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, a lot of games have, like, that, that sort of, like, shifting between realities mechanic, but not all of them are tied to your core movement verb, um, other than something like you said, like Mario Galaxy. And not all of them have, like, these, yeah, bullet hell mechanics in their combat. Right, and again, cool. to emphasize, this is only for this area, this, I forget what's called, the Neon something. Um, yeah. This mechanic does not come back. Like, they could have easily made a whole game around this if they felt like it, but no, we're, we're just doing this here. Yeah, pretty cool. I, uh, I should, we should say, probably should have said this earlier too, not that I think this is much of a factor, but, um... This is a pre-release build of the game, mm -hmm, like it's not mm -hmm. even version 1.0, so it's possible that, you know, there's going to be some incomplete stuff. I, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I don't think there's going to be any major changes between what we've played and, and the final release, but right. that is just worth noting. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I guess I should note here, all these enemies, they have that key icon above their head. That just means you need to kill all of them to have the key icons go to the gate. Yep, get a key, unlock the gate. I was pretty impressed how, how far I made it into the Neon Crest without w with, with one, one health. health. <laughs> and then, yeah, again, I do die at some point, but that ends up being good because being sent back, I ended up finding a lot more stuff that I missed out anyway. Uh, this puzzle I have still not solved on my completed file. Um, it just seems oh, to be it's, a... Uh, there's, there was a constellation earlier. I bet it's that. Oh, you're probably right. Yeah, I, I noticed, I, I notated that when we first got into the area, I was like, that's a weird looking constellation. I wonder what <laughs> constellation that is. It, it's definitely that. Ah, there's where I died because my brain couldn't adjust quickly <laughs> enough to the, the puzzle before me. Um, yeah, now I, now I want to grab my switch over to my right right now and just quickly <laughs> do this. Um, yeah, so like I said, I, I purposely, since I died there, I wanted to go out of my way to check out a different path in this area, and again, I think that leads to some some good footage. Um, just, yeah, all, it's fun. this is the first time I'm watching this all back, and yeah, it, it makes me want to play the game more, even though I already beat it. Yeah, same. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing the rest of it. It's a, it's a really cool game. I, I was pretty impressed, and this is something that, like, I, I think you had on your radar, but I wasn't really all that familiar with it until, like, it's sort of, I think, maybe the Nintendo Indie World account tweeted about it or something. It's like, oh, like, like what is this? This looks pretty sick. And, mm -hmm. like, you, you said that you, you had it on your radar for a little while, so I uh, I was thankful that we uh, that we were able to check this out. It's cool. 
yeah, I, I would still highly recommend Islets to anyone that thinks this game looks cool. Uh, despite the fact that it is another indie metroidvania, it's going out of its way to do some really unique things. Uh, things that you probably wouldn't expect. Um, it does this thing where, like, each of the sections, each of the major sections of the game are their own islands. But the goal of the game from a story standpoint is that the islands have to rejoin together. So when you do that, it recontextualizes the areas you've already been through and like new pathways are open and stuff. So it there really, it there's that constellation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right. I'll have to check that out later. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 there's just so much like love and attention put into like, again, I, I make the jokes about how many indie Metroidvanias there are nowadays, but like, to this scale, there aren't many doing it like this. Okay, so this is the curse. And then, yeah, whenever you kill an enemy, they shoot out three projectiles. So you just need to remember that, like, mm. hey, just because they're dead, uh, I'm not totally safe yet. So you have to kill 15 enemies without dying that have that affliction. Uh, this, What's that little path? What's that was, little, like... I was just about to say, that is the okay. super that I have equipped uh, okay. on, at this point in the game. They're landmines, so, like, if enemies step oh. on those, they get, like, spikes kind of shoot out. Cool. There's actually a lot of cool supers um, or specials. The one I ended up using for most of the game once I got it was just a, it's just a barrage of homing attacks. It works really, really well on like big chunky bosses and stuff. Yeah, see there, I totally forgot that the projectiles were going to come my way. And then also another thing I have equipped at this point is uh, whenever I kill an enemy, it shoots like a whirling blade out that kind of boomerangs. So that's why mm. there's like those discs spinning around. Yeah, uh, another thing to, to keep in mind with this game is um, you you actually can just jump over a lot of like projectiles and stuff. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that that's something that was not like immediately obvious to me until I, when I fought the first boss, uh, I died to it a couple of times, and the game was like, yo, like, you, you can just jump over a lot of the projectiles and, mm -hmm. like, avoid it that way. And it's like, oh, right, I'm dumb, and <laughs> so that it is something to keep in mind. You, you can just jump over some of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think, with, like, Hyper Light Drifter didn't have a jump button, so, like... Your, your brain might not necessarily be tuned to that kind of thought. Yeah. And yeah, I think it, it took me a little bit to start doing it too, or to, to compare everything to Elden Ring, because it's what I'm playing the most of right now. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, going from playing hundreds of hours of other Dark Souls games to Elden Ring, which has a jump button, and a lot of stuff has to be dodged with the jump button. Uh, it, it can be interesting. Ooh. So, yeah, that one, I, ended, I don't know if I equip it this video. I probably do. I think I pick up multiple cool passive things in this video that I, I keep switching back and forth every time I get to a save point. Yeah. Yeah, 30% reduced fill rate's pretty good. Yeah, I, I, love, I love the look of this area, man. Yeah, that was kind of the main reason I knew this was going to be cool. I was like, okay, if cool. I know I want to capture footage from this game, might as well just load it up here. This is a, a, a really minor thing, but another thing that I appreciate about this game, so often in Metroidvanias and stuff, like, I find the map really annoying mm -hmm. to navigate a lot of the time. Like, I don't even just mean, like, moving around it. I mean, like, looking at the map Yeah. and, and like, seeing where I'm at and where I should go like because this game has its environments like so cleanly laid out like they look exactly as they do on the map right you know and like yeah like when you see a bridge it is represented on the map when you see like the even the shape of these little islands they're represented that way on the map it's to me way way easier to, to look at and navigate yeah it's like I said earlier it's kind of it just feels like they he doesn't want you to get stuck for too long. That's just not the type mm -hmm. of game it is. Um, game has like a decently fleshed out like map marking system. I think I showed off later in the video of you you have a bunch of different symbols you can select and like you can mark wherever you want. So 
helpful to try and remember like okay i can't make it across this bridge at this point i need an item but i, to, I want to remember to come back here later gotta get the cd mm, of course just any kind of shiny collectible thing yeah mm -hmm. i want i want to get it uh there are i don't know if i get any of this video but like i, I said earlier you can see all like your friends uh, that you meet throughout the game. You can get Polaroids of their life before they were here. Um, those were my favorite collectibles to find, but yeah, you know, I don't remember if there are any in this video. There ah. you go, curse yep. lifted. It's always a great feeling uh, when you pull that off, especially the ones where you have one health. But it's very, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, just it feels great. Feels great being rid of that curse, I guess. It felt like you killed way more than 15 enemies, by the way. It did, like, didn't it? I was thinking the same <laughs> yeah. thing. I like a minute ago, I looked up. I'm like, how many enemies are left? Four. OK, if you say so. God. All right. <laughs> I felt like you killed way more than that already. Uh, here's an oh, uh, those are the spirits, right? And then I think the spirits, um, they give you money when you go take them back to, like, the main spirit area. And then also, I right. think, to access, like, a post-game thing, you need to collect all of them, but I haven't done that yet. Ah, uh, okay. Also, I forgot to mention that, yeah, I can hold X to charge up and then throw the broom, like a boomerang like that, and that's mostly used for puzzle solving stuff. Even the, the dashing into bubbles and, and going, I don't know, I like any game where you can platform in and around bubbles like that. Yeah, this, this is all pretty Mario Galaxy coded. Just mm -hmm. this whole, this whole area in general. There were some, um, Sorry, my thing froze for a second. Uh, like I said earlier, each area is kind of, or not kind of, but it is fully its own like art assets and stuff. Uh, there's also like, a, like an abandoned theme park with like a devil theme going on. That oh, was really go. cool. Yeah, it, it's, it's neat. But yeah, this area definitely very, very Mario Galaxy has. I like a good devil theme park. Who doesn't? Yeah. And then, yeah, obviously here you, you don't can't dash. dash here. Yeah, you can't <laughs> dash at all. Uh, I literally, I remember I was about to there, and then I'm like, oh, okay, I can't. <laughs> and again, like I said, they could have easily made a whole game of just this mechanic. Kind of again, kind of like Guacamelee, but yeah, they they just abandon it after this area, which is I I always admire games doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. It's. There's a lot of confidence just in like the the ideas that they have. Cause yeah, like I, I think it's pretty easy for games like this to end up feeling somewhat repetitive. Like if mm -hmm. the if there isn't like a constant sort of like trickle of new things, I, I think it can be pretty easy for any Metroidvania to feel like you're going through the motions. And like I like I like the Guacamelee games, but I do definitely get that sense when playing them of just like okay like kind of just doing the same thing for a while right <laughs> you know okay yeah this combat shrine was devilish this was awful yeah, i can tell <laughs> yeah yeah this sucks <laughs> But yeah, I, I think part of the problem with that with Metroidvania is just because there are just so damn many of them now. Like they're, mm -hmm. it's just such a saturated uh, genre, especially in the indie space. So I think that's why uh, all these games from Kyle Thompson they, they just stick out so much because they each are very distinct. They each have like a genuine, like unique personality that I don't see out of a lot of games in this space. Yeah, I mean, I also like that he just, like, knows what he's about. Mm -hmm. He's like, yo, dude, like, this is this is me. I make these games with my brother, and I make, like, I make indie Metroidvanias. Like, yeah. that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs>
And also, I forgot to mention, he puts out one of these like every two years. I think Shippo and Eyelets were almost exactly two years apart. Pretty impressive, and, dude. And then this came out like a little over two years. Like all three of them were August releases. It's like they're just pumping them out. It's pretty cool. Yeah, my like my name's Kyle. I make indie Metroidvanias with my brother, and I make them in August. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's funny thinking about that. They all do kind of have like a, I don't know, like an end of summer, early fall vibe to them. Also, I don't know if that's sure. on purpose, but uh, I think I failed this challenge a couple times if I remember correctly. This is a lot of enemies you got to kill. That's a lot of skulls down on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm wishlisting eyelets now. <laughs> I think you'd like it. I I do, not that I need to c compare them directly, really, but I do think I like this more, but also, again, I'm more of a hyper light drifter person than, like, a, a side-scrolling Metroidvania person at this point. At least that one I failed instantly. Yeah, dude, you're, you're right. The <laughs> Shippo came out August 26, 2020. It looks like Eyelets came out August 24th, 2022. And then this one, I think, is August, like, 29th, 2024. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're all, like, <laughs> almost exactly two years apart. That's wild. And again, I, I really do want to emphasize, like, despite the fact that Eyelets and this are both technically Metroidvanias, they are very different games, even though you can see a lot of, like, the same DNA and, like, you can tell the same person made them. But they are, it's not like he's like uh, just recycling assets or anything, like far from it. Good for him. Wow, I don't remember this one being as insane as it is. This is pretty crazy. Yeah, this is pretty crazy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got this, though. Oh, yeah, Bite Ooh. Back. I was very excited about this one. That's pretty good. I really like these kind of like sleepy looking enemies. <laughs> They're just kind of yeah, chill. They kind of remind me of something you'd see in Kirby or something. They're just kind of mm -hmm. hanging out. They're not trying to hurt you, but they will. And then this is just showing off some of the equipment stuff. Yeah, I, I forgot how actually early in the game this is. I only have 21 upgrade points. I don't have that much stuff. Um, to give you an idea of like yeah just how big this game is that an area this cool is pretty early on relatively speaking I also never figured out when you dash that statue comes into into physical existence. Oh I, yeah. I didn't know if that was also a thing that I missed out on. Oh, this is sick. Mm-hmm. Alright, yeah, this is a shortcut to another area. Yeah, we love attack speed up. That's one of my favorite yeah, things agree. in any game. Yeah. Always good. That's such a, like, just the, the waterfall, like, fading into, like, the the sky with constellations. Like, it's a pretty sick visual. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that, uh, that weird, like, library in outer space and Penny's Big Breakaway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anytime you're, you're going through, like, ethereal planes of existence is pretty cool with me, I guess. Yeah, despite how excited I was about the bite back, I'm like, nah, I want that. I want a yeah. test speed. <laughs> <laughs> Testing yeah, it out. <laughs> you can see it. Yep, it, it looks faster. Yep.
I think at this point, we're probably not super far from the boss. I'm very excited uh, for that. I, again, I said earlier, I think it's my favorite boss of the game, but I did first try it, not to take out tension, but I was uh, very, very happy with that. It was, I, I felt Just pretty God good about gamer. myself. Yeah. yeah. You, can, you can say that, and please do. <laughs> That's very cute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, it looked like I I don't remember if this is true or not. It looks like you can like warp to the uh, the little wells from anywhere. Like you mm -hmm. don't have to go to another well in order to teleport to it. So, yep, that's that's cool. true. Yeah, I, I think when I keep looking at the map, I'm trying to do the mental calculus of like, is it, should I just warp back or should I just keep trying to figure out this forward path here? And I, I guess for the sake of the video, I decided to keep going the forward path. Yeah, cause, cause like a lot of, um, a lot of Metroidvanias will make you just like hoof it to one of the, like if this, if this were another Metroidvania, you'd have to walk to a well in mm -hmm. order to fast travel. And I think I, I did think that's how this game was structured at first, and I didn't do the warp from anywhere for quite a while. Then I realized it's like, oh okay, like yeah, that's not an ability you need to unlock. It just that's just how it is. No, oh, what's the deal with that? Ah, there go. okay, I didn't remember. So this is part of another quest. Um, there's a movie theater in in the sky that... That's sick. Yeah, you need to... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you need to get, like, the three keys or something. Like, you need to find the three um, areas that are related to the movie theater. I forget, like... Oh, yeah, you, you get, like, film reels here, I think. And then that opens up what was probably the hardest boss of the game. Very good jelly squelching sound effects on these enemies too. Yeah, yeah, the sound design's really good. I also like how like, yeah, they're, they're just kind of, like, superfluous elements of the world that, like, also phase in and out, like, the little blades of grass and stuff. Mm -hmm. For, like, no reason other than to just reinforce, like, the theming of the area. There you mm -hmm. go. Oh, yeah, Dagoberg. That's, like, the, <laughs> the employee at the movie theater. I will say I also re-downloaded uh, Hyperlight Drifter onto my PS5 last night because I haven't played it since <laughs> it was new and this game really put me in the mood for Hyperlight Drifter. Yeah, same. I haven't played it since it was new either. I don't think I even played it on Switch at all. I wanted to, but it feels like it doesn't go on sale very often, so I just, mm -hmm. just kind of let it go at this point. If it performs well, that'd be a great Switch game, though. I bet it does. Yeah, I bet it performs just fine on Switch. I was always surprised that um, the that previous game from the Death Store devs, Titan Souls, I was always surprised that never came out on anything else. Yeah, my wife loves that game, but yeah, she... Yeah, I liked it too. Yeah. She, she always was uh, pretty bummed it was never on Switch. I never actually played it, though. Yeah, it's good. It's, um, it's, it's really straightforward. Like, it just is a boss game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's good. Like I and I, yeah, I don't know why it was like stranded on PS4. I think. I feel like a lot of games got weirdly stranded on PS4. Mm-hmm. Ah, so now we're back in this room. So then I think the next room is the boss. Okay. I don't remember why I came back here real quick though. Oh, probably to mark my map. Oh, makes sense. There you go.
Yep, that star icon is still on my map because I still don't know what to do. But now you point out the <laughs> constellation, that's probably correct. <laughs> that seems right. Yeah, I don't know. It, it seems like that's what it is. That's also the fun thing about having a game so early is that you can't just Google it if you get stuck. You just, you're really just right. stuck there. <laughs> oh, let's go. So yeah, it takes my brain a little bit of time to adjust to this fight also. Uh, but once it clicks, it really, really starts clicking for me. And yeah, this, like I said, this is easily my favorite boss fight. It starts off, you just... It looks pretty easy, and it is, but then all of a sudden there are two of them yeah, attacking you at the same when time. When they're both at once, yeah. The music's pretty good, too. Mm hmm And yeah, that, that's a good example of like just how much bullet hell stuff is in the game. Yeah, it took me my brain a little bit to just like, oh yeah, when he's doing the slam move, if he's invisible, I can just let it happen. It doesn't matter at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I also, I mean, I don't know if this is true of every boss in the game, but um, from what I noticed from the, the first boss and, and this, like, it seems like maybe the bosses are, are kind of, like, advanced versions of, like, normal enemies or something. Huh, I hadn't thought about it. I mean, yeah, this in this case, that does seem to, to be what's happening, but I, I think most of the time they're just, like, their own unique things with their own unique moves and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like the the uh the first boss kind of was like a almost like a like a super version of one of those like pot enemies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this one seems like it's like a more advanced version of like those other ones. Oh, here we go. Spirit split. That's cool. Yeah, I wanted to end the video just showing this off real quick cuz this was an interesting power up to to also emphasize like yeah, it's a Metroidvania but it really has some unique stuff going on even in its abilities and stuff. Um, yeah, I will say about the bosses, some of them are like downright horrifying, which makes sense because you're in like this weird limbo afterlife place, but, uh, there's some pretty cool looking ones later. They aren't just all like little bug dudes, but let me, anyway. let me pause it here. Since yeah. We're, yeah. We're at the end of the video. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that, yeah, that was Crypt Custodian. And, um, yeah, like I said, I, I, I really quite loved it. Actually. It's one of my favorite things I've played on switch this year. It seems really cool. I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Um, I think when the embargo lifts, it's either out now or it's coming out soon. And uh, yeah, y'all should y'all should check this out. It seems really cool. I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Yeah, for sure. And also check out Eyelids while you're there. Yeah, check out at least at least wish list it. You know, see if it goes on sale or something. Mm -hmm. so. Um, but yeah, I'll have a purchase link in the video description, um, for, for y'all to check this out for yourself. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for showing it, Matt. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching it. Yeah. See y'all next time. Bye. Bye.